Now, this is about to break you. Girl, you cannot have your nails anyway. And that sucks because if you want to look cute and you, you're somebody who likes to get your nails done and long, long and stuff, you can't do it. Every nail has to be the same. It's no party nail. There's no party nail. So for instance, see how all of, I have these pretty marble nails? Every single one is the same. Normally, I would do like a couple marble nails, some black nails, and a bedazzle nail. But because I go to Hooters, I can't do that. Every nail has to be the same. Secondly, the length of your nails matters. They will do this. This is how they can tell if your nails are too long. They hold them up. They take a pin and they sit it right here. If your nail goes over the pin, so for instance, if it looks like this, I'm trying to show you, if it looks like this, like your nails are going over the pin, that means they're too long. Obviously, my nails are not too long. You can't see them. You can't see any of my nails. They're obviously really short because these are my natural nails. So you can't see them. But if they were to go over the nail like that, you either have to come back with your nails and cut down, or you will keep getting put at the bottom of the list. Which means you'll be stuck closing every night. Nobody wants to close every night. Like closing is super annoying. So you don't want to do that. I'm going to talk about the shifts. You want to make sure that you're on time for your shifts. Every Hooters does something called jumpstart. It's basically when all the girls for that shift come into a circle with the managers. They talk about the new specials for the day. They talk about the games that are coming on that day. And the managers check you from head to toe. Check your makeup, your nails, your make sure you have any rips in your nylons, and things like that. So you want to make sure you're on time for your shift. If you're late for a shift, then you'll have to pick last. When you pick sections, they go by your sales. So if you if you work Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, chances are your sales are going to be high versus the girl that just works Monday night, her sales are going to be low. If you have high sales and you're late for your shift, you'll be put at the bottom of the list, which means you'll pick your section last and you'll probably close. Again, who wants to close on a Friday night? Nobody. No one wants to be in Hooters. We close at 12, so you'll be in there probably at least 12, 30 to 1. No one wants to be there all night. It's fun to make money, but no one wants to be there all night. So make sure you're on time for your shift. Another thing is that Hooters is a part-time job. You, your shifts are usually only five to six hours unless you're working a double, which is random. They don't like girls to work doubles that much because they feel like you can't be your happy hooter self if you've been here for 12 hours. Dealing with customers, dealing with people, dealing with the kitchen, you're pissed, you're probably irritated, ready to go home. So you usually can't do doubles. You do five to six hour shifts and you can do sometimes four to five days. I've seen other girls do six to seven, but that's only if you pick up shifts. Like if you switch a shift, somebody would pick up. But you usually can get uh, three to five days, you know. Um, so it's a part-time job. You will never be full-time at Hooters because you own, you don't even get scheduled more than five days. And the shifts are only five to six hours. So it's not um, full-time. You can pick up shifts really easily through an app called Hot Schedules. And you can release shifts easily through Hot Schedules. So it's pretty easy. For instance, um, there have been times where girls are like, and literally this will happen. My friend... My friend Kelsey said that she might be going to Miami this weekend. She might need somebody to uh, take her shift. That's really spontaneous. At a normal job, you're not going to be able to go to Miami in three days. But when you work at Hooters, you can turn up and you can turn up and go to Miami in three days and have somebody take those shifts, girl. You can live your best life at Hooters. Trust me. Yeah, that's a, that's a good thing that is really flexible. You can also, if you go away to school, you can also come back on breaks and weekends and holidays and work. So that's really cool because when I was in college, I lived, my school was four hours away. So I would come home during winter breaks, like a few days for spring break and fall break, Thanksgiving break, and I would work my butt off. I literally, winter break, I kid you not, I came home with like $30. I went to Hooters for a month and I left. I left with like $2,500, went back to school $2,500. That's a lot of money for a month, and you're only having four shifts a week. That's a lot of money. You also have to work holidays and weekends. You don't work, like, obviously Christmas Day, Thanksgiving Day, but you do work Black Friday. You do work the day before Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve, New Year's Day. We are open, and New Year's Eve we're open. The hours are different, but you still have to work. We're open 4th of July. We're open Memorial Day. We're literally open for all the good holidays that you want to be out turning up. So just remember that that's something that you're going to have to do as a Hooter girl. You're definitely going to have to work some holidays. 
You also have to work weekends. Weekends are a must. If you can't work weekends, you probably will not be able to work there at all. Everyone has to work weekends there. Nobody's excused from weekends. Everyone works them. You have to be available for two shifts. Friday night counts as one shift, but Friday morning doesn't. So you have five shifts to choose from. Friday night, Saturday morning and night, and then Sunday morning and night. My, I just keep mine open. I used to keep mine open for just Sunday morning and night, and they would only schedule me, obviously, the morning or the night. They wouldn't do both. And that's how I would get through it. Um, some people like to be scheduled Friday, Saturday, and Sunday because the weekend is where you make your most money. But just keep that in mind that when you're a hootie girl, you might not get every weekend off. And that's okay, boo. You coming for your coins. It is what it is. So everyone has to start as a host. And then you have to take a test called a floor chart test. Basically, they give you a paper with some squares in it. You have to be able to write what each table number is in the squares. That's just to show that you know what tables are which tables. After that, you'll move to the cashier um, station. Once you get up there, you also have to do your menu test. You can't become a cashier because they cash out people and they put in the orders over the phone. You have to know the menu very well in order to do that because there are times where you can't even look at the menu to see anything. You just have to push the buttons. So you have to take a menu test before you can move up as well. After the menu test and you're finally a cashier girl, you can then take the liquor test. All the liquor and beers, all the wines, the beers, um, bottled beers. I have to take the liquor test to learn that. After you take your liquor test, then you'll begin to start your five-day Hootie Girl training. Your five-day Hootie Girl training will consist of your first day, you'll be a Hootie Girl. You'll train behind a Hootie Girl. Your second day, and your second day, you'll train with her as well. Your third day, you'll go in the kitchen for two hours as a kitchen boy, and then a, a two hours on the floor as a bus boy. Fourth and fifth day, you'll be following behind a Hooter girl. All those days, you'll be with her in her section. Your fifth day, you'll get your own section. But all the money you make in that section is gonna go to that Hooter girl. You're just getting paid hourly for your five day training, which sucks because you work a whole section and you don't get any other money. But after that day, you'll be able to get the money. So just live through your five days, not the end of the world. I literally did my five days in one week and I was able to serve the next week. On your fifth day, you'll do a table test with the managers and you would basically just have to show everything you learned. Um, you have to smile, make sure you say the Hooter slogan, show that you know the menu because the managers will try to trick you on the Hooter test. I think I remember um, on my table test, she asked me like, hey, can I get a... Can I get a chicken sandwich? Normal people would be like, okay, chicken sandwich. My next question, my next um, question to her should be not, okay, chicken sandwich, I'll put it in. It should be, what kind of chicken sandwich? Would you like um, a buffalo chicken sandwich with um, crispy or would you like it grilled? Because, um, you know, there are both. She says grilled. Okay, would you like lettuce, tomato, and onion on it? Would you also like to add mayonnaise or cheese? That is how the it should go. You shouldn't be like, oh, okay, I got it, got it, and you're gone. You have to make sure you're on your P's and Q's for your table test. You finish that, you are officially a Hooters girl, so that's really good. You're officially making your money, sis, you have to make your coins, and you definitely will make some coins. So I'm going to just talk about the tips and literal tips. Just in general, your tips, like your money, and some tips to help you when you become a Hooters girl. So the thing about tips, like the actual tip that you make, it can be good and they can be bad. You can walk into work on a Monday night and it's super dry and you get four tables and all four of those tables tip you 30 bucks. You just made over $100 and you get to go home. There are times where you can make no money at all. You can come in on a Sunday morning and you have seven tables and one tips you $2, one tips you five, one tips you seven and you're like, fuck, I'm not making any money. And sometimes it's like that. You're not gonna come in every day and make money all the time, but you should always come in positive and have a goal to make every day. My goal is always to break 150. I feel like if I come in and I make 150 every shift, then I was making money. Sometimes there are bad shifts. Sometimes you do have bad tables, you um, bad tippers, bad tables, people who are rude and they don't tip you. Sometimes their food comes out wrong and they don't tip you. It is what it is. You have a tip out. You have a 2% tip out. 1% goes to the bar for any drinks that you served and 1% goes to the busboy for them picking stuff up and stuff, cleaning up. If you don't have a busboy, that shift is just 1% for the bar. Um, the tip out kind of sucks sometimes because, for instance, you make 300 bucks your shift and your tip out is going to be 2%. Your tip out is like $40. 
out of your three hundred dollars, something like that. That's gonna piss you off because you know what you can do with forty dollars, sis. I can buy some lashes. I'll get my nails done and still have money left over to get Chick Fil A. So you know it. It kind of sucks, but you still have your rest of your money. So just be mindful of the tip out. How to maximize your tips? So a couple ways to maximize your tips are to always be friendly to your tables. You don't want to go up to your tables and say like, "Hi, how are you?" Hi, like that's weird you look weird you acting like elmo bitch that's weird you want to just go in there and say hi my name's melissa i'm gonna be a hooter girl today or hey guys how's it going my name's melissa i'll be a hooter girl today can i get you guys started with some beer can i get you guys started with some ice cold drinks something like that you don't want to be super fake but you don't want to come off like grim it's like hi guys Hi, Melissa. I'm gonna just get you some drinks and <laughs> like you know nobody wants to like be have a waitress that sucks. So if you're friendly to your table, you're super nice to your table your whole day, the whole shift, you're gonna get that's gonna help maximize your tips. Another way to maximize your tips is to give them personalized attention. So you will go up to a table and you notice that the little girl has on a huge crown. Oh, hi guys, how are you? My name is Melissa. I'm gonna be your hooter girl today. I noticed that you have a crown on. Is it your birthday? You just caught her attention. It's probably her birthday or she's probably some freaking weird kid wearing a freaking crown. But either way it goes, you just made the little girl feel special. Which now makes her parents feel like, damn, she really care about my kid. So now they automatically have in their head that you care about them. Or they automatically have that personal connection with you through this stupid little crown. You see a couple, there's two couple, there's a couple, and... They're holding hands and they're laughing and blah, 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 and they're having a good time. Hi, guys. My name is Melissa. I'll be a hooter girl today. Are we on a date night? Are we here for a special occasion? Boom. You just got them again because you just asked them if they're a couple. Now, if they're holding hands and they're not a couple, sis, probably not going to get no tip because you effed up. But more than likely, they're a couple. And more than likely, they're either out for date night, they're hungry, or maybe it's their special occasion. Maybe, I don't know. Their grandma died and she left them a thousand dollar settlement. They about to spend a check at Hooters. You want a piece of that thousand dollars, girl. So make sure it's personalized. Make sure you try to have personalized relationships with your tables through the short amount of time that you have. The next thing I'm about to say, if you work at my Hooters and you watching this, you're going to be like, this is a, you have to be very, very, very nice to the kitchen and to the bus boys. And I say this because the kitchen makes your food. They literally make the food for your table. If you're mean to boys in the kitchen, I have seen some crazy things in my days at Hooters. They will throw your food away. I've seen them mess up food, throw it away. I've seen them throw tickets away. I've seen them make a full plate and put it at the end of the line so it got cold. Now you got to get a remake and now your food cold and your table's pissed. Just be nice to the kitchen or be as nice as possible. It's going to be some a-holes in that kitchen. You're not going to get along with everybody. It's going to be some a-holes. It's some entitled kids in there who don't have to work for sh in their life. They're just there to buy video games. They're just there to, to help themselves get some clothes to go pimp out some girls. I don't know. And there's some really genuine people in the kitchen who are there to pay a check. They're there because they have kids. They're there to pay their bills. And they're just really cool people. So just try to be as nice to the kitchen as possible. If it's an a-hole in the kitchen, don't be like me. I have cursed some people out in that kitchen and they know they do not play with me. Do not be like me. Go tell a manager. Girl, I almost got fired. It literally went all the way to the head man, all the way to the head people at Hooters. I almost got fired for some entitled loser in the kitchen who basically said, told like a bunch of lies on me and they did a whole investigation. It was a mess. So just be nice to the kitchen and just watch what you say around them because they will take your stuff and try to flip it, you know. <laughs> That's some shade for you know who. But anyways, just be nice to the kitchen. Be nice to the bus boys because they're going to clean your tables faster. They're more than likely to help you clean your tables. Make sure you're being nice to the bus boys and um, just try to be really nice to them. They're usually pretty cool. The bus boys are pretty chill. You have to take everything with a grain of salt when you work at Hooters. If somebody, if a table's like, oh my God, you're the worst server in the world. If you don't take that with a grain of salt, sis, you'll be walking around the whole day feeling like you're the fucking worst server in the world and you're not. You're a bad B because you got hired at Hooters. You're fine. 
You got a man at home waiting on you and you making these coins. You're not a loser, but if your table makes you feel like one and you don't take it with a grain of salt, you're going to have a bad shift. Manager yells at you in the beginning of this shift and you don't take it with a grain of salt, you're going to have a bad shift. In life, you do have to take everything with a grain of salt, but especially working here. Like, sometimes I even had a table where everything was perfect and um, my fork fell on the floor and you took one second too long to get my fork. Fuck you. Like, come on, really, lady? A fork? Take it with a grain of salt. If you don't get good tips, take it with a grain of salt. If somebody pisses you off, take it with a grain of salt. My last tip to you is avoid drama. This is a place where majority of the people you will talk to are females. And not just any females. These are girls who are young. I have never, I don't think I, there's anybody in my store over 30. If you're in your 20s, you're still young, obviously. Most of the girls are younger in between the age of 16, and I've seen it go all the way to like 27, 28 years old. So, with that being said, a lot of people are going to be really catty, um, boo swings, all that, like hating. I'm going to have some girls that's going to hate. I kid you not, one of my good friends now at Hooters, when she first came to Hooters, their store burned down. Their store from another Hooters burned down. They came out Hooters. And she was so she was just mean to me. She bummed me and everything. I we was about to fight up in there, cause y'all know me. We was about to fight. She know who she is, but I love her dearly now. That's my girl. But when we got off on the wrong start, and that just comes from like us being females. You don't want to be like that. Be nice. Try to be nice to everybody. You're not gonna like everybody. I don't like some of the girls up in there. I think some of them is not the best looking. I think some of them are lame. I would never talk to them outside of work. I think some of them like try too hard to be my friend like you know and then there's the girls that are super nice super cool super down to earth super turned super fun and you like them so it's just best to try to avoid drama you're obviously probably going to get into something if you work there like it's going to be something petty it could be the smallest thing like melissa didn't run my drink for me and now my drink's cold and she saw us sitting there like stupid stuff like that's gonna happen all the time so you know, whatever. It is what it is. It's going to be what it's going to be. Just try to avoid it as best as you can. I haven't done... I've done a pretty good job up until this summer. People was testing me and I was over it. I was over it. But don't be like me. Try to be happy. Try to be friendly with everybody. And your time in Hooters is going to be great. Because my... Even though I had some stuff happen, my time in Hooters was still really great. A question that I get asked a lot is... How do you like being a Hooter girl? I really enjoy being a Hooter girl. I love the uniform. I love how cute it is. I understand that I'm only 22 and my body is probably going to keep growing and blossoming. And I'm not going to be able to fit into these orange shorts forever. It's also really cute to say like, oh, I'm a Hooter girl. Like, it's super cute. And it's a really good side hustle, a really good way to make money. I did um, start, going, start working at Hooters when I was in college. And when I graduated, it was a way to help me buy my Jeep. So, I do have a Jeep. I'm going to be doing a video on that probably later. But it's a good way to help you make extra cash. It's a really good way to meet some good people. A lot of my close friends I did meet through Hooters. also has lots of, like, opportunities. We have Hooter calendars. We have promos, car show, video shoots, things like that. So, it's a really good job. I really feel like this is the kind of job where you, have, where you learn to be comfortable in your own skin. You learn that you can be beautiful. You you know, you learn to keep yourself up and being surrounded by all these other positive girls. Because a lot of girls are hooters, they're working to get their degrees. A lot of those girls are moms. A lot of them are aspiring to do things in life. Some of them are aspiring models, aspiring actors. Like I've seen it all. And it's nice to be around a bunch of people who are all trying to come together to do one goal. We're all girls and we're all just trying to make our money and survive in this stupid, crazy world. To answer the question, I really do like working at Hooters. And hopefully this video helped you get ready for your interview. Hopefully this video gave you enough information about Hooters and about what it's like. And hopefully I will see you in the orange shorts, girl. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching my video. Please like and subscribe my and subscribe to my channel please like my video give it a bunch of thumbs up and if you have any questions comment down below any comments concerns comment down below and stay tuned for my next video i'm gonna do another video for a hooters question and answer so stay tuned thank you my beauty cutie